understands the benefits of staying active, but isn't necessarily into the idea of the fast-paced Zumba or aerobics, or interested in spending hours walking on a treadmill or sitting on a stationary bike. The I Can Do program will teach you how to use the walking cane as a tool for exercise and self-defense. The program will also introduce you to new ways of dealing with limiting thoughts, thus helping you to stay motivated to continue working out, which will enable you to maintain a great quality of life. While the I Can Do TV show is a great start, it isn't a replacement for quality instruction from a certified instructor. Now, let's get started. I want to quickly cover with you what we're going to do with the cane at points when we're not using the cane for exercises. And you would also use this at times with you're in the store, even around the home, when you need both hands for doing something, but you want to keep your cane close to you. Your first choice is hooking your cane in your pocket or hooking it in your waistband or your belt. And the reason for this is because if something does happen and someone starts coming for you, you can grab for the cane immediately and be ready to deal with them. But at the same time, when you need your hands free, they're free. It's, think of it as the old West style kind of quick draw of the pistol. It's the quick draw for your cane. This warm up exercise, the prayer stretch, is to start warming the forearms up to get them ready for the workout. So what we're gonna do is hook the cane and then place our hands in prayer position in front of us. Then the you pull, keeping the palms together, you pull the hands down as low as you can go. Do not rise your, uh, your shoulders up to your ears. Keep them relaxed. Focus on breathing nice, slow, relaxed breaths. The stretch, as I've mentioned in previous episodes, is in the under part of the forearm. All right. You're keeping your elbows slightly up. The idea in the end, though, is to try and bring your, your head down as low as you can. However, I want to stress that listen to your wrists. We're not here to push and try and force the connective tissue to stretch. Stretching connective tissue is bad. Now he's going to rotate them down and he's going to pull the wrists up, keeping the shoulders away from the ear. The elbows ultimately should be below the wrists. Now, Kind of reinforcing what I was saying earlier, there's a lot of myth about how to stretch out there. Well, I want to point something out to you. Research shows that connective tissue isn't really designed to stretch. So this exercise isn't stretching the connective tissue, it's warming it up. It's getting it ready for the work. The muscles are stretching. Those are what you want to stretch. Those are designed to stretch. All right. So if you're doing an activity and you feel it in the joint or the connective tissue around the joints and not in the muscle, then you need to modify so you feel it in the muscle. So now he's just going to gently relax, shake out the hands. Continuing to warm up the wrists, we're now going to do the single hand cane rotation. So we're going to grab our cane in a mid shaft grip and we're going to start rotating the cane. So we're going to go palm up, palm down. We're supporting on the forearm. We're not going past palm up, palm down. We're only going to do it 10 reps. After the 10th rep, you move your hand back behind your elbow. 
You're now going a little bit further. You're starting to allow these three fingers to relax so you can go further without risking the connective tissue. All right, the ligaments and the tendons in your wrist. After you reach 10, your hand goes back to the shoulder. Now you're going as full range of motion as you can. You're allowing the elbow to move and the wrist to really open. All right? And so, as you can see, he's hit his 10. So now he's going to change hands. Starting again, first with palm up, palm down. All right? Once he hits his next set of 10, he's going to go back behind the elbow. All right? Do not try and do this fast. It is better to do this slow than fast. We are dealing with the ligaments and the tendons in the wrist, and we don't want to run the risk of inflaming them or causing any issues. All right? Now, he's back to the shoulder. Now, part of the reason why we put the hand to the chest is to start reminding us that our empty hand is going to be up and alive if we ever have to defend ourselves. Right? Single-handed cane rotations are a very important part of your cane workout. Right? Never, never cut them out. Now we're going to move to warming up the core. So we're going to have Bob here do the twist. So he's going to grab the cane in both hands, and he's going to start rotating his hips and shoulders. Now I want you to take a moment and take a look at his feet. All right? So I'm going to have him do it wrong first. Thanks, Bob. All right, I'm going to have him do it wrong first so you can see with his he heels planted on the ground, he's twisting his spinal column. This is bad. All right, this is going to injure connective tissue, cause vertebrae to get out of the loin. Now, if he lifts the heel and rotates through, you see the spine is, the hips are moving with it, so the spine's not twisting. The muscles are getting warmed up, but the body, the back, is staying safe. Even if he tries to overreach to hit me, he still keeps his spine safe. All right. This is an important exercise in warming up the back before you do any workout routine. <laughs> you can tell he's trying very hard to hit me, but that's okay. So, I'm not going to let him. And that's the spinal twist. Now we're going to move to the lower body. We're going to do the hip flexor stretch. Bob is going to start. He's going to turn towards me. He's going to step back. He's forming, as you can see, a tripod. This is for stability. If he wants to challenge himself, then he can go ahead and lift the cane up off the ground and hold it. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and have him work with it on the ground. His heel is off the ground, his knee is slightly bent, his hips are rocked forward to isolate the hip flexor. You're going to get some stretch in your front thigh, your quadricep, but this is primarily getting the muscle that helps to lift the leg. When we sit down a lot, that muscle starts to shorten. What happens then is that shortened muscle, when we try and stand up, it starts to put pressure and pull our spinal column out of alignment. And that is bad. Now I'm going to have Bob change legs. Okay. And you can lean back while doing this, or if you find that you need to start leaning back, what Bob is going to do is he's going to actually straighten his spine, but step his foot a little further back. So it's going to cause the leg to straighten a little bit but it's going to intensify the stretch. And it shows that his, 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 his quality of stretch is improving, getting much better. Okay? He's taking deep, comfortable, relaxed breaths. All right? His mind, any thoughts that are coming up for him during the workout, he's sort of seen himself put them on the shelf. He can deal with them after the workout. But for right now, he's present fully for the workout. All right? That is the hip flexor stretch. Now we're going to move on to stretching the calves. Bob's going to turn towards me. He's going to form the tripod again. So cane and leg in the front. The lead leg is going to be in the back. Now this time, the heel is on the ground. The leg is as straight as he can make it. This is not necessarily as wide of a stance as you might think. 
What we're doing here is we're working to isolate the calf muscle. This is important for balance, but also for not pulling the muscle if you're trying to reach for something, if you have to move fast, if you misstep. All right? Again, his breathing is nice and relaxed. That's going to be one of the things that you hear all the time from me is to relax your breath. Now also, I'm going to add something else. Start imagining yourself to breathe into the back. Feel your back become part of the breath. So that now, you're not just breathing with your chest, but you're breathing with the back. Now he's going to change sides. So he comes up, change the hands with the cane, and steps back. Okay? Focusing on his breathing, isolating, now, if you start to find that this stretch is becoming a little too easy, what you can do is take a deeper step. All right? But you still want to try and make sure that the heel is on the ground. Okay? Now, I also want to note that you'll notice that in this episode, Bob is wearing shoes. Okay? I've mentioned this in previous episodes, but I want to reinforce that you don't have to work out barefoot. Previous episodes, Bob chose to because that will, is what was comfortable for him. But now we've moved to showing you that you can do this in shoes. Because in real life, if something happens on the street, you're wearing shoes. Bob's going to come on up, shake it out. Now we're going to practice our balance. We've had 10 previous episodes to start building up to what we're going to do today. We're going to be combining the front kick with the back kick. So what we're going to do is we're going to balance by using our cane and our supporting leg. We're going to bring our knee up, slowly, out, with control, back, with control, and then we're going to pivot with control, out, back, with control, and down. We're going to do that for 10 reps. I'm going to have Bob come in, and he's going to do it while I talk about a few things. All right, so now Bob's going to do 10. Now you notice how he comes out, he snaps it out. So while he's doing this, he's working the ankle on his supporting leg. He's working the calf. He's working the hip flexors on the supporting leg. He's working the glutes as well on both legs the hamstrings, the quads, and even on the, on the back, you can even actually work your calves. So you're working your entire lower body. After you hit your 10, change sides and continue. All right? Now, we're not worried so much about like getting super high. What we're worried about is making sure that you're balanced. You want to try not to put your foot down while doing this. But if you have to, that's okay. If you find right now that this is a little challenging doing it with the cane, then you can try it with a wall and then build up. All right? Work this out every day over this next month, and you will find that your balance improves significantly. Now we're going to work on an empty hand technique, a blocking drill. Because it's empty hand, we have gone and put our canes away. However, if you need your cane to help you stand, then go ahead and hold it in one hand and use your other hand. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to step back. Let's go ahead and step back, this time with our right leg. We're going to get to a natural ready stance. So we're going to bend our knees. We're going to take our right hand, make a fist, and put it away at our ribs. Then we're going to take our left hand, make a fist, and we're going to put it down in front of our leg. This is how we're going to start this drill. Then we're going to take our left hand, our left arm, and bring it up over our head. Then we're going to bring it down by our thigh. Then we're going to bring it up in front of our shoulder, and then across to our other shoulder. So once again, it's up, down, cross, across. All right, Bob, come to the center. So, now as Bob goes through, I'm gonna make some points. As Bob is doing this, you notice how he's turning his wrist out. All right, this turning out of the wrist 
helps to add power and strength to your block. As it comes across, he turns it again. Again, adding power, lining up the body for strength. Okay? And also, I want you to notice how what he's doing is he's moving the elbow. The arm is really along for the ride. All the focal point, he's circling with the elbow to come up, circling with the elbow to come down. Okay? The blocking is happening. He's using this entire region to stop whatever's coming at him. Now, I'm going to have him switch hands, change side. At home, do the same. Practice this. Try and do 10 sets or 10 reps of these with both arms. All right? Get comfortable in doing this activity so that you're better able to defend yourself. So let's protect the head, protect the torso, protect the head, protect the head. Okay? You can also use this to block if someone's trying to punch at your torso as well. Head, leg, boom, boom. All right? You can play with it. You can mix it up later on. But practice the four corners block. In this section, we're now going to move into combining moves that we've learned in the past to start being able to use them to keep ourselves safe on the street if something happens. So the moves that we're going to be working with today are the torso block, and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab with both hands and we're going to hit with the crook, drive the crook into the torso, the body of our opponent, and then we're going to push them away. So it's going to go one, two, three. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the bob in and show you on the bob how it would look. So on a bob, it's going to look like this. Torso block, hit. So you can see I'm getting a nice shot into the floating ribs or into the torso and then push away. Okay? So block, hit, boom. And you can also see that as I'm taking my block and I'm going into my stance, I'm loading the hip for the hit. Boom. He's getting this hit in the floating ribs. It's really nice. Boom. 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 Okay? One, two, three. Now, at home, if you don't have a punching bag or a bob to practice on, it's okay to do it in the air. If you have something you can get used to really feeling the power needed to move your target, all right, practice on that at home. So once again, lock, hit, push. Now, what I'd like to do is take a moment to demonstrate for you what it would be like, the different techniques or attacks that you can use this technique for. So I'm going to introduce you to two different attacks that you can use this combination for. The first is if they punch with the left hand. They come, you torso block, smash them in the ribs, and then push them away. The second one is if they don't punch with the right hand. You come, you step out of the way as you torso block, smash them in the gut, and then push them away. Now, the only real difference between the two is whether or not I'm stepping away and the angle in which I've been pushing him. Whether it's just pushing him straight back or pushing him at an angle. All right? Other than that, it's the same technique, just for two different kinds of attacks. Now, continuing with taking the techniques and combining them to be able to learn how to keep ourselves straight, we're going to now work with the reverse torso block. So we're going to come up across, block, grab it, step and come across their jaw, and then into their ribs, and push away. So once again, reverse torso, grab it, swing it across their jaw, and so make sure when you swing, you see it come to the other side of your own head, right? So if you look out your eye, it's over in the corner of this side, then swing it to the ribs, and then push them away. Now I'm going to show you what this would look like on the bob. I come across, I block, I hit in the head, smash in the ribs, and then push them away. All right? So again, it's block, hit, smash, and push away. Now the reality is, he may block this, but he's thinking up about his head. And you may hit him, but it may not come out, may not. 
but it sets you up for hitting in the ribs and then pushing away. Okay? So again, one, two, three, four. Create the distance. You push your opponent away. And really, after getting hit in the head and hitting the ribs, they're going to be easy to push away. Even if they block you, you're on top of them, you're going to be able to push them away and create the important distance that you need to then be able to either A, get away, or B, choose a different technique. So again, block, hit, hit, push away. All right, now I'm going to show you some, a couple of techniques, attacks that, to use this against. First attack we're going to look at using this technique on is a punch from the right hand. The cane's in my right hand. He throws the punch. I reverse torso block, smash across the head, hook into the gut, and push him away. Okay? And yes, Bob is a ham. Okay, so once again, he attacks with the right hand, block. He, see, he, they say he gets his arm up in time, it's okay, because I still hit him, and I still push him away. All right? So now, the other scenario is if he attacks with the left hand. I still reverse torso block, smash into the head, into the ribs or gut, and push them away. All right? So practice these techniques at home. Become comfortable with them, familiar with them, so that you're able to use them to keep yourself safe. Today's episode is focusing on relationships. Relationships really are our connection to the world. And when we take those relationships for granted, well, we start actually losing that connection. And so what I'm going to task you with is think of three people, the closest people to you. And I want you to, to find photographs of those three people. Just a photograph. You could be in the photograph or not. And then for each one of those people, write down five things that you're grateful about for that person. And begin the sentence with, I am thankful for, and then going, John, because he has helped me with my car, or he has he's done whatever. So an example for me is I would say, I am thankful for Bob because he has helped me film my episodes, and he has put up with the pummelings that I have given him sometimes while filming these episodes. Second person would be, I am thankful for Christina because she's been the great director and producer of the I Can Do show. And so you write out the five things just in that way for each of the people. It could be a husband, a wife, friend, child, anybody that you feel close to. And then carry this with you throughout the day. Now, again, in our program, for us, it shows through in the crew that I have working with me and my being thankful for them. And so I would hope that you are thankful for the efforts that they are helping to put in to bring the I Can Do program to you. That's part of the relationship as well. So think of the people that are closest to you and write five things about them that you're thankful for. Like us on Facebook. I can do! Facebook, our Bob gets it.